Hi, and welcome back to this episode 35 of this never ending saga of converting and modifying this old Sieg 7x12 mini lathe. This week I'm going to start with some CAD pewter aided, wait a minute, some cardboard aided design because I need to mock up some sort of a housing here. This is going to be a bit of a sort of just make it up as you go along fabrication. Yeah, the whole thing could have been designed a lot better if I'd thought this through from the start. Probably also starting with a completely different concept for the uh, enclosure. Next part to make will be the monitor carrier. skipped a couple of steps forward there because I was charging batteries. As you can see I've now finished off the housing for the monitor and I've just held it together with a couple of Clico clamps just to mock it up. Yeah that's looking quite nice I think. Should fit flush with the top of the rest of the enclosure. So here I'm just riveting the monitor surround to the uh, control module. Once again using aircraft rivets, this time it's AN470 dome head rivets. Matching snap here in my rivet squeezer. My friend Jürgs had some bearing issues on his beautiful Schaublin 125CCN lathe. So I went to take a look. So this is the spindle headstock. So these are the bearings that came out of it. And you can see that the rear bearing is very loose. And in fact was spinning in service, which has caused contact corrosion. Jürgs measured this bearing as about nine one hundredths of a millimeter undersize. And here's Jörg measuring the diameter of the rear spindle headstock. But it looks like the bore is, although there's some, some marking there, it doesn't seem to measure out too badly. We seem to be quite consistent with our two hundredth of a millimeter undersize and a variation of less than, uh, less than five microns as well as we can measure it at least. So we're using the bearing spacer as a way to hold it more rigidly and we can see basically zero run out in the forward bearing seat. Looks perfect. If anyone's interested I'll put a link to the forum thread about his spindle bearing replacement.
Now, while I love these kind of rounded, swoopy castings you get on these older 1950s designed machine tools, a nice thing about more modern squared off machine tool design is you can put junk on top of it. So what I think I'm going to do is take this piece of steel plate, mill out a recess into it, put in some uh, lino or rubber or something and have that as a spot to dump tools and stuff. You know, lately I've been watching videos from and communicating with a guy up in Denmark called Nikolai. He's still pretty much getting started with his uh, YouTube channel, Nikolai Owns. I'll put a link up here in the top corner somewhere. Where I'm just a guy playing around in his basement with these things, he's the real deal, an actual machinist trying to make money with this stuff. And uh, he's got a pretty darn nice shop with an old Akuma lathe and a beautiful modern DMG machining center. So go over and show him some love. Check out his channel. Uh, I made it out of uh, hot rolled steel, so it's got quite a heavy uh, mill scale on it. I'm not going to bother milling it all over and prettying it up. It's, as I say, it's only a tool tray. Tools are going to be put down on here. It's probably going to get dings and dented and stuff. So what I'll do is just put it in some vinegar. Because vinegar, like any acid, will convert the, whatever it is, iron 3 oxide to iron 4 oxide or other way around or... Anyway, it converts the uh, mill scale into an oxide which can be easily just washed off. Once that's off, I'll just buff it with the uh, wire brush wheel on my grinder and leave it at that. That'll just sit in there overnight. Day two. So that's now been soaking overnight in the vinegar. And you can see that the mill scale is now flaking off. That's the, the conversion process that the, that the acid does. So now that that part's basically done, next up, let's make this front plate.
Well, this is turning into a bit of a part spin specialist, this build. What I'm using here is actually a piece of the Maho. Uh, it's the old cathode ray tube monitor holder, but I'm going to recycle it to cover up the, this motor at the back. Now this channel's number one fan, Nico, has been hassling me about the lack of angle grinder content, so this one's for you, mate. Right, the last piece of this puzzle. And strong temptation to just tape this bit of cardboard on and go, woohoo, finished. Thanks for watching. Tom from the German Zerspannungsbude website was pretty disgusted that I used these socket head screws to hold the keyboard on. So he sent me a little baggie of uh, whatever the din is for these lens headed screws, which uh, obviously look a lot better for this sort of usage. I mean, really, what I should have done was make a nice chamfer and mount this keyboard from the back of the plate. Unfortunately, I didn't think of that at the time. Thanks, Tom. That's a great improvement. Inches later. Well, it's slowly starting to come along. Just need to drill all the holes to screw it around the edges. I've already done, done the bottom. Then I need to bend this back flange around and drill its fastening holes. Like that, it's beyond the range of rigidity of this bender. Unfortunately, especially this top bar is a bit too thin. This apron needs to be doubled up a bit thicker, but maybe I can get it to work. Yeah, yeah so it's a bit more rigid around down at the end here. So basically I shouldn't put 
uh, longer strips into the middle of the thing. Well, this has all taken much longer than I expected, but I've now got the basics of the cabinet finished. Uh, next thing's going to be painting it all. There's a couple of other little pieces I need to do, but I think I'm going to finish this video here. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, hello to all the new subscribers, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.